People who listen to emergency radio scanners, what is the creepiest slash pandemonious thing that you've heard over the airwaves? Damn, this one was sad. I live in Texas, about 100 miles inland. There was a huge hurricane heading for the coast, and even this far inland, we were told to be prepared. I remember my dad, and I decided to go to Heb a few hours before the storm was supposed to hit, just to get a box of instant pudding mix, and the store was complete chaos. Well, all the warnings were pretty much pointless. We didn't get a drop of rain, but we did get a shitload of wind. My mom and I were downstairs listening to the scanner, my dad was in the kitchen making pudding, and my brother and sister were upstairs sleeping. The wind was causing power lines to go down, knocking out power to parts of the county. Every once in a while, we'd hear a routine police call. Then we heard the call. An ambulance was requested at such and such address for a tree that had fallen on a young teen male. My mom got a concerned look on her face and grabbed the phone book. She flipped to a page and told me that address is the last name's house. So and so last name was my brother's best friend, and he was the only boy his age living at the house. We continued listening to the scanner, and dispatch called back and said, you can go ahead and send the ambulance, but you also need to send the JP. My mom told me I needed to go upstairs and wake up my brother. I did, and I brought him downstairs. My mom had to explain to my brother that we had just heard his best friend died over the scanner. My dad was a volunteer firefighter, so we always had the scanner on. One night when I was about 10 the tornado sirens went off. We ran to the basement and once we were settled we turned on the scanner. That night I listened to police and firefighters, many of whom's voice I recognized, give a play by play of our town getting destroyed, as if it was a goddamned football game. I listened to business names and street names trying to remember where my friends lived. My dad left to help. Then we heard my street. The next morning the house two doors down was gone. I didn't sleep well for a long time after that. Sometimes ignorance really is bliss. I worked at an air for a while, so the scanner was always on. One night the ambulance was responding to a call about a young man that was unresponsive and the mom was doing CPR. A couple of minutes later it came in that it was attempted suicide and then when they arrived they called for a coroner and could hear the family screaming and crying in the background. Right after that we get a call and it's our Kaoka. Her son had hung himself with a belt in a closet and tried to resuscitate him and she was hysterical. Truly heartbreaking. A fat woman tried breaking into her own house and got stuck in the chimney. Fireman had to use a winch and about 25 gallons of lube to get her out. My time to shine. My then girlfriend, now wife, worked the same city 911 system as paramedic. She worked days, I worked nights. She had finished her shift and went home. We lived together, I was working overnight. Around 3 in the morning, I heard dispatch send a unit to our address for a shooting. A lot of times these are unfounded, but I was still freaking out. The unit was operating on a different band, different radio bands for different parts of the city, so my partner and I switched to that band to listen. We heard it was a confirmed death from a gunshot wound. I was crying and driving up to my house, 20 minutes away, but then heard the report. 30 year old male, gunshot wound to the chest, coroner request. I page someone who tells me again that it is a male, not female, that is dead in my house. I call my girlfriend, she doesn't pick up. For some reason I log on to Facebook and see a picture she uploaded of her and her niece at her brother's house. I totally forgot she was babysitting that night. Still didn't answer who the hell was in our house. Turns out two men broke into our house and one shot the other. I was scared thinking what if my girlfriend had been home but the neighbor saw the two men sitting in a car across the street for a few hours, most likely waiting until she left. This was the worst thing to hear over the radio and such a relief in the end. Dad was a paramedic responding to a domestic dispute with a gunshot victim. While he was on the way he heard one cop shout something along the lines of shots fired. Shots fired. Drop the weapon. Bang. Silence. In the most calm collected and tired voice my father had ever heard. You're going to need a lot of backup. And don't bother with the medics. They're already dead. The guy was apparently a war veteran and in a dispute with his wife. She had cheated on him while he was overseas and when he got back and found out he confronted her. 
she was a bitch about it and getting abusive. He broke and shot her multiple times in a sort of torture fashion. Dad said it was pretty gruesome. There was also two dead cops on the scene when he arrived. He couldn't go to help them or anything, or even check due to rules preventing him. He carried a gun, but wasn't playing hero over dead people. They parked around the corner, heard a bunch of shots and some shouting he couldn't understand then over the radio they called him in, where he just checked each body and called the coroner. Four dead in a murder-suicide by police. And before anyone tries to make a play against guns, that isn't the problem here. It is a lack of aid to those that come back from war. That one along with having to tell a 4 year old, 3 years old, and a 6 year old, that their 3 month old little brother just died of SIDS, were the only things that stuck with him over his entire career. I work for a newspaper, and we have a scanner in the newsroom. I used to work the overpass shift, alone. So I was responsible for keeping an ear out for stuff going on. Luckily, it's a pretty small town, so it's pretty quiet at night. One night, I heard a cop responding to a suspicious group of people in a park. Then, dead air, which wasn't entirely unusual. I heard the call in, moments later, from the officer coming in to back him up, when she found him shot in the head, near death. I listened as the other officer searched desperately for the man who shot him. It was so scary hearing how desperate, helpless, and furious those officers sounded. That was several years ago now, and I will never forget it. Not sure if I made it in time, but I'm a radio officer in the Coast Guard. Kind of half 911 operator, half air traffic controller. I've heard lots of chilling calls. People drop dead on deck and try to get resuscitated. People hoss vessels are going down and they know they won't be around long and give you messages to families etc. One of the worst, a fellow was on a fishing boat with his pal. It was really early in the morning and he was cruising along. Well the guy must have been turned to the back of the boat, while his buddy was in the back messing around with some gear. He didn't notice a sandbar, and hit it hard. His friend was thrown from the back into the wheelhouse, and bashed his head. The guy called in while doing CPR, and his friend was clearly dead from the description, but he just kept going. Shit like that can keep you up at night. I was fascinated with scanners, when I was in my early teens. One night, back when you could pick up any cell phone call within miles, as they were analog and unencrypted in the 900mhz band, I was scanning through the 900mhz band and my scanner stopped on on a news frequency. All I heard was, and then I'll bring the rottweiler in, and let him fuck you, how do you like that? It was kinda shocking to my 13 year old self. I think I switched frequencies, when I heard that. Now I wonder what else was said oh. Oh. I used to be a park ranger for a top 1% affluent town and we carried police radios. I thought the summer was going to bring wild and exciting communications. These two events were most notable. Asterisk domestic abuse incident between a daughter and her mother. One hit the other like once and there was a lot of yelling and temper tantrum behavior. Report of a white male walking down the street with a backpack and long hair. I shit you not. They sent police to question someone for walking down the street without a suit or polo shirt and having hair like Jon Snow. <laughs> Grew up in a remote area where police were hours away, so we all listened to scanners and would rush to help as a community until police got there. A neighbor called in a motorcycle accident up the street from our house at a bad curve where there had been lots of accidents over the years. My dad would often take us along to help. We rushed out knowing an ambulance is usually at least 45 minutes away. We pulled up to the motorcycle and a guy laying in the ditch. I knew something was different, because dad told me to stay in the car. It was his best friend. He was dead. It was one of the few times in my life I saw dad cry. It's quite a long time since you've been able to monitor police radio in NZ, so this was quite a while ago, probably 2001 or so. The dispatcher called a 10 to 1, attention all units for any unit, that could respond urgently to a 1F, assist fire slash ambulance, to provide urgent assistance for a panicking caller whose infant was choking. Ambulance were more than 10 minutes away. A unit, area sergeant from memory, was only a minute or two away and responded immediately. 
there were then a series of radio transmission from the officer on scene, update dispatch as he performed CPR on the, by then, unconscious infant. Each transmission was accompanied by the sound of his hysterical screaming a crying mother in the background. After about 2 to 3 minutes and 4 or 5 transmissions the next one had the sound of a crying infant and the officer reported that the child had started breathing and was responsive. Ambulance arrived a few minutes later and the child was transported to hospital as status 3, which means moderate condition, but not likely any threat to life, was a pretty intense thing to hear. Conversely the most amusing I recall was after a while where a number of officers had been doing area patrols around the area in search of someone reported to have been exposing themselves to vehicles one of the units on site radioed the Delta dog unit to see if he was at the scene yet his reply almost immediately was yeah I'm just putting my raincoat away the description of the suspect transmitted only a minute or so earlier was a middle-aged man wearing a long raincoat. When I was working for a federal government land management agency in Montana a few years back, something really creepy came over the repeater network. While we were working in a canyon that had very poor radio reception, we heard a very long, creepy, and drawn out moan come over the air. This was followed by a very weak, in both reception and tone, help, me, in a women's voice. All of us freaked the fuck out. These weak cries for help kept repeating low guttural. Help me. On until dispatch finally stepped in and said this is a federal emergency network. Unless you have an emergency, get off this channel. This was followed by another plea for help. Then a gunshot and screaming. Turns out two local crazes were out four wheeling. Going straight up steep embankments. When the ATV flipped backwards. Pinning the man under the ATV. Both of them being high on some substance, they started freaking out. The man, being perfectly fine, except for being pinned by the leg and high, started to hallucinate that he was bleeding out, pulled out his handgun and shot himself to make it quicker. Because they were four-wheeling so far back in the sticks, a helicopter was needed to retrieve the body. I'm a cop. So listening to a police radio is something I obviously do all day, every day. Car crashes. House break-ins, assaults, those are all routine. The calls that sent chills up my spine are actually the silent ones. When you hear a radio squelch, and maybe one or two words from another officer, fight or gun, and then silence. Then there's just dead air, and everyone stops what they're doing, while dispatch tries to figure out who it was, and where they are. I always wanted to go into law enforcement as my grandfather was a chief of police. So I had a pro model scanner that I listened to as often as most listened to their favorite FM radio station. When I was 18, I worked the graveyard shift. Well after I was done with work, I came home turned on my scanner and went to sleep as I usually did. I woke around 11am and was listening to the dispatchers. All of a sudden they mentioned my home address. I was shocked and got out of bed excitedly to go tell everyone in my family that I just heard our address on the scanner. When I turned the corner in the hallway to go into the family room, the people from our fire department were coming in the door and my dad way laying on the sofa in full cardiac arrest. I will never forget that moment as long as I live. FYI, my dad did survive but was never the same. He had 7 full arrests that day and was in a coma for a month. He was 48 and died at 57. He was taking an average of 160 pills. Yes 160 pills per day to survive. I think he just got tired of taking all of the medication. Not really creepy, but a few years back, my friends and I decided to drive down to the local park to hang out by the lake that is there. I should probably mention that it was nighttime and the park closes at dusk. Problem was, during the winter, they put a log and some jersey barriers in front of the entrance to the parking lot, where you gain access to the lake, to discourage people from doing donuts in the snow. My friend's car was small enough to squeak by, but my car had to remain on the other side. As we are sitting there, we decide to turn on a police scanner app for funces. All of a sudden, we hear over the air waves two unidentified cars parked at Hutchinson Park. We all exclaimed oh shit and proceeded to back out and split up between the two cars. Sure enough, there was someone parked about 30 feet from my car with one of those store-bought blue siren lights. We managed to escape before any real cops arrived. Thank goodness for scanner apps. 
I'm a Leo in a rural area, so we get odd calls pretty often from elderly people that are starting to lose their grip on reality. One time around midnight I got dispatched to a call where an elderly woman saw children in her yard. She was worried about them and wanted them sent home. On the way there she's still on the phone with dispatch describing them and where they are in her yard. I get to her house, a likely wooded area on a rural road about 100 yards off the road, no yard lights or anything. There aren't any children in the yard, so I knock on her door. She invites me in and starts telling me about the kids. She points to a window that peers out into the darkness and says there was a little girl standing there staring at her. The little girl smiled, gave a wave, and walked away from the window. The woman knew she was still there because she could still hear the little girl giggling. I went back to my car and left. We get calls like this all the time, that you know the person is going crazy, mental illness, old age, drugs, etc. But they are so serious it almost makes you believe. I lived in a boring, semi-rural town growing up. My dad worked nights. On Friday nights, my stepmom would order pizza before the pizza place stopped delivering to our address. Funny story, and we'd listen to the police scanner. There was barely anything else to do in this town. So the scanner was great entertainment. So one Friday, we are chowing down on some pizza and listening to the scanner and they keep reporting something like bear on the loose in our neighborhood. The dispatcher said something about it being a possible prank call and the calls kept coming. After a while of this, the dogs start barking and we hear a rustling and scratching sound on the back porch of our trailer. I turn on the porch light and look out the window. It was a fucking black bear. My stepmom calls the police. The dispatcher gave her attitude, thinking it was a prank call. I let the dogs in the front door, and we got the shotgun and waited. Eventually the bear wandered off. It was funny, because no one had ever seen a bear in our area. Most exciting thing that ever happened in our little town. TL, doctor, bear tried to break into our house. Dispatcher thought there was a rash of prank calls about a bear in our neighborhood, 